while one Tamil man was speaking, another man who was sitting down burst out in tears. And it is quite something to see an adult weep uncontrollably. This man had been in detention over three years. He had received an adverse assessment from ASIO. Like the other 59 refugees, including children detained with their parents, he has not been charged, he has not been given the evidence against him, he does not know why, there is no possibility of appeal, yet he is in detention indefinitely. A couple of weeks after we left, he attempted suicide. There have been three attempted suicides in Bob Bella's detention centre. This is what the assessments mean. Eventually they would kill somebody. As the, the refugee lawyer David Mann said yesterday, these are secret trials, we don't know the procedures, we don't know the rules, all we know is the negative outcome and the cruel effects. And David Mann is currently part of a legal challenge in the High Court. I wish him and his legal team had success. But it's also very important that we come out here today so that we the judges in that courtroom are making their decision. It is not just that they are looking at technical, technical legal arguments, but they are facing a refugee movement which will not let this issue drop until it is fixed. Then we keep up the pressure on the ALP. The ALP actually have policy now, which is that these decisions should be reviewable. Uh, Labor for Refugees got a promotion at the ALP National Conference, yet the Immigration Minister Chris Bowen has not acted upon it. And the decisions should be reviewable. As an absolute minimum, refugees should have the same rights as Australian citizens. Australian citizens who get adverse assessments if they're going for defence jobs or whatever, they are able to see a statement of reasons from ASIO. They are able to appeal to the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. But actually, I think we need to go a bit further and say that we don't actually need these checks done at all. Really, this is a political process that is used to punish, punish the image of refugees in the general community. There are tens of thousands of tourists who come to this country every year who have no, no checks done. And actually, refugees, not all refugees, get checks done either. There is a system of political triage where ASIO and the Department of Immigration choose who gets checks done and who doesn't. And it is a political process. So to give you an example, in 2007, under Kevin Rudd, there were hundreds of Tamil refugees who got refugee status and who did not get negative assessments. But then, when, uh, then, when the uh, Labour Party announced the visa freeze on refugees coming from Sri Lanka, and after the uh, Oceanic Viking, there was a sudden change. All of a sudden, Asia switched to negative assessments and the channel started to get negative that assessment. This is a political position. And some people have asked, is it now the case that um, they're taking information from alleged war criminals in the Sri Lankan government? We don't know. But we do know that ASIO has form on these things. Uh, they had to pay out $200,000 to one refugee uh, when they relied solely on uh, information from secret police from a country with a poor human rights record. ASIO has actually got things wrong again and again and again. There are serious reasons to doubt the credibility of these assessments. There is one uh, refugee, Mohammed Faisal, who has spent five years in the room on the basis of an adverse assessment. He had a complete breakdown in 30 months in a private psychiatric facility in Brisbane, at which point ASIO did another assessment and mysteriously found himself in the after all. There is another man, uh, Mohammed Sega, who had three years in the for adverse assessments. He was later taken in by a third country, Sweden, when their security authorities did a security check on him, he was found to pose no evidence whatsoever. And I'm uh, just across the border from uh, Sweden, we have Norway, and people might remember that recently there was not a refugee posting security groups, but the homegrown and his brevet who massacred 77 innocent people. And part of his motivation was actually the vicious uh, anti-refugee discourse that is now part of mainstream politics. The, I mean, you can ask, why is this currently happening? Part of it is the 
not expecting to lose, and I said, partly as well, we're facing an election year, uh, an economic crisis which is not going away. We have a government opposition that is incapable of dealing with the mountain job losses they're starting to see. And then it's convenient for them to have political scapegoats. The means the silent circuits are not really the football to uh, human beings. And if there's one thing that I want to, want to, to, to end with, it is this. At the moment, these assessments are made at the behest of the Immigration Department, which is known as standing outside. Once negative assessments are, and uh, uh, adverse assessments are found, there's actually no law in this country that says refugees need to be continually retained. This is the decision of the Immigration Minister. The law is that should be reviewable. What we are calling for is the Immigration Minister to use his power. Not one single law has to change, not one single act of parliament has to be uh, put through for the Minister to be able to release the 59 into the community. So we are calling on Chris Bond to release those refugees today. Thank you.